Good afternoon once again and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 828 and the topic today is um, all about self-love. What I actually called in the title is why loving yourself comes first not last or why you should, why you, yeah. I'll explain more. Before I jump into that though let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day because I do these every day. Uh, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen that around the broadcast, somewhere around it should my name should be signed on. I am the I'm an, I am an inspirational speaker and love and relationships expert helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also an inspira- excuse me, a best-selling author, that's the right word, or an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. A great book for you if you're looking for more principled teachings about how to have a healthy relationship. If you're in one or if you're not, it works both ways. I am a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women and also why I stand for them, and also went and started these talks over two and a half years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. I since shortened the title down so I could put more descriptions in, and today we're episode number 828, and the topic is why self-love comes first, not last, or at least that's the way I'm saying it now. I've been very pedantic about this for over a year and a half, and actually created a downloadable meditation course, which I'll put the link at the back end, about self-love because it's so vital for everybody. If you're single or in a relationship, period, self-love is a key thing. I don't mean it in a, well, I'm not even going to go there. I mean it in the sense of really putting yourself first in respecting, caring, supporting, honoring, and loving yourself. We're, uh, We're in a culture, a society, a teaching that's seems to be and has definitely exhibited symptoms of being extremely um, well split between either focusing on somebody else so you got to love them more you love yourself you know you want to do that or loving loving having somebody else love you that's probably a better way of saying it so you can feel special and better now on that side of things there's a few disqualifications, so to speak, when you're really learning how to be a healthy, responsible, conscious, caring, giving adult. One of those is egotism, because there's a lot of over, overdone, blown egotism where it's all about self-love, like I'm loving myself because I'm special, versus I really care about myself and I love myself because I am special. There's a little difference there if you noticed. The extreme case, of course, is somebody who is so um, psychologically messed up, and I'm not going to get into the labeling at this point, where they will use other people to feel more loved because they don't know how to love themselves. That's a trap, by the way. So self-love is a freedom tool. It's an access point to bring yourself back to really taking out who you are because when you start to really honor, respect, and love yourself as an authentic, caring gesture, you'll discover some things that'll be quite surprising. One of the things is you'll make better choices. Yes. You might choose better partners as part of that choosing. That's one thing that's also very important. We have, I'm including myself in this, we as a human race have a bad habit of choosing below what we really deserve in relationships. Which sounds interesting because that means both people are choosing below. Not going to get into that one. But the reality is that for many of us, we don't believe we deserve the best. And those people who think they deserve the best are usually drawn from, again, basically from an ego place versus a heart place. I'm talking about the best, as in the best quality of relationship that you can bring yourself to experience, express, and share with, and receive from. Not like I'm going to be able to go, the person has got the most money or the biggest car or the biggest house. That's an ego-driven design. I'm not going to go there. Well, we'll see. I don't plan on going there. So bring yourself back to full self-love, self-support, and self-honoring. It means one, you make better choices. Two, as a, as a result of that, you won't settle for less than you deserve. And three, another piece that comes up is you start to trust yourself more because what happens when you start to really love and appreciate yourself and care about yourself is you make better agreements. You make agreements that are worth keeping and you make less agreements that are not worth keeping. Hi, Nancy. Nice to see you my broadcast. And this is the thing. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a Facebook Live first, which is why I said hi to somebody you can't see. <laughs> I have to keep doing that because it's people watching YouTube going, who's he talking to? So now you know. So the side effects or the benefits because it works either way, of self-love is you make better choices, as I mentioned. You won't settle for late things as much because you take care of yourself and you won't put yourself in situations or you rather will not stay in situations that aren't honoring of who you are. 
You'll also find yourself making cleaner and healthier agreements, which mean that when you make those agreements, you will actually keep them, which also means that you don't make as many. Because one of the things, I did a whole talk about agreement keeping a few weeks ago, maybe two months ago. I can't remember what it is. You, you, I'll tell you that back end, by the way, the links you can go find my replay so you can go find it for yourself. Because agreement keeping was a big teaching point and it's a big teaching point now. The thing about it is when you start, again, come from the place of self-support, self-love and self-appreciation because when you start loving who you are, all these um, facets and aspects of how you love yourself become more visible, more discernible to yourself. Again, you support yourself. You, res you have more confidence in yourself. You trust yourself. You keep your agreements. You have more confidence in yourself. You say no to things that don't line up for you. You choose your agreements more intentionally, more carefully, more authentically because you know who you are. Because a lot about self-love is you start to realize who you really are. Many people, it's surprising how this works, but many people don't even know who they are because they don't learn to love themselves. And I say it because, intentionally, because when you start to love yourself in a very intentional, practical methodology, and again, I'll put the link to my, my self-love practice in the, in the comments because it is deceptively powerful. And I'm saying that as a true statement. I'm not making stuff up, basically. Is when you start to play, come to the place when you really love and respect who you are, you start to see how amazing you really are. Yes, it's a side effect. You start to discover who you really are is a gift, who you are is a caring person, who you are is a worthy, deserving person, and so your self-esteem increases too. Lots of good side effects. Yes, Nancy, it is right. Absolutely, thank you for the agreement. So being intentionally self-loving as a conscious practice, and I mean it from the point of view of just having deep reverence for who you are, so you respect who you are, and you then appreciate who you are, also becomes a... Um, resonance it'll start to I'm just trying to say this basically what happens is when you do that you start to get the same thing from other people and those who don't you walk away from easily because you realize that you don't deserve to stay as again you said earlier you don't settle for less than you deserve which means that not only in your relationship but in your connections friendships business everywhere you'll choose higher than you've chosen before self-love is a liberation by the way Say so again, self-love is a liberation device because when you start to really love yourself, you'll be liberating yourself from playing small. You'll liberate yourself from playing less than you deserve. You'll liberate yourself from playing smaller than you really are. And you'll liberate yourself from mistreating yourself. There are many people I know and quite a few clients I've worked with who have gone through abusive situations in a relationship, even horrendous things that have been including such things as rape and, and traumas and other things that have been really painful. And for them, the road back can be challenging because they've been convinced or have convinced themselves through what they've been through that they don't deserve to be loved. And they keep choosing relationships that exacerbate the same problem. This is, by the way, is a... It's not dramatic retelling. It's a fact of life. I've seen people do this where they will choose relationships that keep hammering home the same limiting point. Part of the healing process that I talk about with my clients a lot because it's vital is to learn to love themselves. 99% of the time, all right, 100% of the time, going through abusive situations and upset situations are not your fault. And also not your responsibility. Sometimes we are, and I've talked about this before too, wasn't planning to go down this path, but I'm going down this path anyway. We have spent time in relationships that have been painful because we had a painful childhood or a resonant frequency, not because we're punishing ourselves, but because we think the wiring is such that love comes through that expression, meaning that we were in environments that were painful, upsetting, and challenging as kids, and we think that love is tied to that because of the way we were raised. So then we start repeating that thing in adult relationships. That's a whole other teaching I've done many times. So if you want more explanation, I can tell you how to find that. And also, you can reach out to me for support. So I'll put a link in the comments here. You can do that. But the thing is, is that the key to unlocking all that pain and wounding is to come back to love. It sounds simplistic, and it is in a way, but it's not always easy. Self-love is a very simple practice, but the ease with which you can do it can be some, there can be some hurdles to get over because for many of us, we have judgments and guilt and resentment and other various um, imprisoning experiences that limit us from loving ourselves because we don't think we're deserving of it. You know, it's like you, when you say that when somebody says to you, or when you've heard somebody say, you know, if you knew, really, if you knew, if, really, if you really knew what I was like, you wouldn't love me that one you've heard that statement before if you haven't seen it on tv you may have experienced your own relationships or you've said it in your own relationships 
That's usually triggered because there's a belief running inside, an old program, an old wiring that has put us in the place where we don't believe we deserve because we did something heinous in a past relationship. Or more importantly, something heinous happened to us in past relationships. So we don't think we're deserving of love because we let that happen to ourselves. That's a mistaken approach. It's a lie you've been telling yourself to hold yourself back. When you realize that what happened to you happened to you, as in it was something that happened, it's not something you triggered, you caused, or you deserved, you start the journey back to healing. And self-love is a healing practice. It's not an easy one, as I mentioned, especially when you go through the, the um, stuff that comes up when you do that stuff. That was a technical term, by the way. Basically, what let me say it this way. Self-love, again, is a simple practice, but it's not always easy because when you do practice self-love, and the way I recommend it is with the meditation I offer, it will unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, trigger memories and bring up old limiting beliefs and feelings that you've used as excuses not to love yourself. And when that happens, you keep loving yourself. When the judgments come up, you start forgiving yourself. Self-forgiveness, by the way, is a self-love practice, meaning that when you learn to love yourself, you learn to accept that you made some mistakes or you have judgments you're carrying and you can forgive them from the right place, which is love. Self-forgiveness doesn't work from up here, I believe. It works from down here. And from my experience, that's how it worked. So, Sam Sarah, yes, exactly, Nancy. It's that, it's that coming back, it's coming from a, place, from a place of humility, but also from a place of acceptance that you are deserving of more. So you're willing to let go of the judgments. And forgiveness with love is the best way of doing it. So self-love, as I said, has many different um, facets and aspects and um, fruit that it bears. So if self-love is the plant, there's a lot of fruit that it bears. Let me try and reach for analogies. That, wasn't, that, was, that was okay, I'll use that one. But the recognition is that when you do practice self-love, the benefits again are these fruit, including self-trust, self-confidence, self-respect, self self-appreciation, um, self-support, self-honoring and your self-esteem increases dramatically i think i made this clear self-love is a great practice if you don't already do it i do recommend starting i have a recommendation myself for how you can start most effectively which is going to be the link i'll put in the comments after i sign off because self-love is vital i mean i created the product because i got such a demand and such a clarity with my audience because they realized and they were also being educated that self-love was a key it's a key to freedom it's a key to, to empowerment. It's a key to supporting yourself like you've never supported yourself before. It's frankly my um, it's my go-to in a lot of ways, but it's also the cornerstone of my work. Everything with my coaching starts with self-love because every relationship is a reflection of how much you love yourself. That's probably the biggest piece, by the way, because since I'm talking about relationships and my work, one of the biggest challenges a lot of people face is they keep looking out there for the person to love them to make them feel okay. They're looking out there to feel sufficient. They're looking out there to be fulfilled. They're looking out there to be fed. Those are, well, I'm saying errors in approach. You cannot be filled up energetically by somebody else's love, somebody else's gift, somebody else's calling. As unromantic as that sounds, because the reality is you can only feel loved as much as you love yourself which you might explain why you might feel like when they love you it goes away too quickly but when you let somebody when somebody loves you so much it can be either overwhelming and you get an aversion to it or it doesn't feel like enough and it dissipates the reason why is because you don't have the foundation or the battery filled with love inside that is yours so self-love as i said is a cornerstone for every relationship because when you do love yourself fully it gives you the chance to receive love from outside and it is the bonus because you get to fill up from inside first, all that love is an overflow. It's an abundance, it's beyond what you need. So you can enjoy the abundance of that and then you can share it back to the other partner. If both partners are expressing self-love on their own time, in their own space, with themselves, it makes a relationship much healthier, much more wholesome, and much more fulfilled with love. I am, as you may have guessed, passionate about this topic because I've talked about it quite a few times, and which is why I created the self-love practice. Well, self love, excuse me, self love guided meditation practice because that's what it is. It's an opportunity to love yourself. And how you do that, you can do that. I recommend mine because it works and I create it for you. Um, the link will be in the comments. And if you don't have it written down, it's barryselby.com forward slash self love. I will put the link in the comments so you can just click on it. 
it's a recommendation I have because if you have any blocks, challenges, upsets about relationships, you're not finding connected, you're not feeling worthy of it, this will be one of the keys that'll open the door to have you be abundantly available to love. Love starts from within, and I'm passionate about this learning. I didn't know this for a long time, so I learned this myself, is that love does start within you, within me. Yeah, that. So when you go into a relationship, you don't go there going, I'm empty, I need to be filled up. Yes, at times, let me say this as a sidebar, in relationships, sometimes you may be feeling so drained, you look to your partner to fill you up. That's okay. But you don't live the whole relationship that way. That's not healthy for you or for them. Loving yourself first is how you fill up your tanks, your battery, so to speak, so you're, you're fully charged to start with. And from that place, you can have an amazing relationship. And certainly your dates, if you're single, will go much more powerfully when you are loving yourself first because you don't need anything from your partner. So those dates you go on, you can enjoy detached and free to experience what it's like to be with that person. So even before your first date, self-love helps. I think I made my point. Um, I appreciate you being with me. I did put, I will put links in the comments again for my self-love practice. I will put a link in the, book, book, the comments for my books. I mentioned that at the beginning. And if you want to talk and understand further how this works, I'll put a link in the comments so you can talk to me for free. Um, it's complimentary, put it that way. Um, let you know that also, this is my Facebook Live, as I mentioned, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, where have you been? <laughs> um, you can join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. There's a link somewhere around this broadcast is, is a three dot um, more options. Click on that and you can be notified next time I go live. If you wanna see my replays, because I've got 827 of them besides this one out there, you can go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then you can go to my YouTube channel, where I keep them as a backup, because it's always good to have another channel. And from what I've seen, YouTube has a complete listing, whereas Facebook seems to store only part of my broadcast. I don't know why. But if you go to YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, also my social media name is Barry Selby Everywhere, and um, you can subscribe to my channel, and that's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live. So I invite you to go check them out. You can search through those for different titles to speak to you. I'd recommend looking at the agreement keeping one. Um, I think talking about trust on that one. See the trust or, or agreements, look for those keywords. You'll find some broadcasts that will help you with that. I mentioned the forgiveness one, that was a few weeks ago. Again, you can search for that as well. Um, I think that's it. There's, some, there's, there's 827 broadcasts, lots of content. Start somewhere, enjoy, peruse, watch, take notes, and reach out for support. I thank you for watching as always. This is my gift, my service, my, my expression to the world. I appreciate you watching, and if you want to share it out with other people, feel free. If you have any questions, thoughts about this broadcast, please put them below, and also I'm going to sign off. I thank you for watching, as always. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.